Hello again and welcome back to Cricket Insights. Today we'll take a look at Ian Chappell's list of the 25 all-time great Ashes players on how Steve Waugh misses out and we'll also take a look at some of the players we think who should have made the list. So to get things started off, let's have an Aussie steak on an Aussie le Legends comments. Dan, what do you think of that list? Yeah, look, it was, an oh, it was an interesting list, but there's a few things I'd like to pick apart a little bit. First, I'm going to give Ian Chappell the benefit on the doubt on one thing that he likes to bring up, and that's Steve Waugh being a selfish cricketer. And we're going to look at one incident here. This is Steve Waugh's final series, first test final series against India, where he's involved in a run out, and it's not a good look for Steve Waugh, I must admit. Uh, he keeps on running and leaves Damien Martin a little bit for dead. And Ian Chappell likes to bring this up, saying Damien Marner should have just stood there and, and, let, and uh, Steve Waugh would have been running out instead. So, um, yeah, this, this is Ian Chappell, one of his uh, points he likes to bring up. So when you look at this as an isolated incident, it's not a good look for Steve Waugh, but over a 168 game career, I think it's alright to um, know that there's going to be one or two hitches along the way. Steve Waugh, to me, uh, and looking at his Ashes career now, is quite brilliant. Average of over 50. We look at uh, his 1989 Ashes series, his breakout uh, series as a, as a test cricketer. I mean, and the thing that stands out to me is his record. He played in nine test series, nine Ashes series, and won eight of them. Right. So, I mean, it's hard to find a more successful cricketer in the history of cricket in terms of specific series. But to win eight out of nine series, he's the most astra uh, successful Australian cricketer that I can think of in a national series. The other thing I just want to bring up, uh, just before you make your point, is when looking at selfish cricketers, Kevin Peterson on his last tour to Australia did not want. He played like he didn't want to be there. He played like he wasn't interested in, you know, winning the Ashes. And when he saw the ship sinking at five 0 by the time he got the Melbourne and Sydney, he, there was, yeah, <laughs> he wasn't interested in fighting for it. So, I mean, if you're going to have Kevin Peterson there at 10, right. and not Steve Waugh at all, there's a lot of inconsistencies going on. Absolutely, I agree completely with you. And as, as you would know, and for the fans out there, Steve Waugh is my all-time favourite cricketer, so I will be biased towards him not being over there. I would be for him, for sure. And I, if you look at it, for a player who started out his career struggling to make 100, what for over four years yeah, like you mentioned his breakthrough series I think after the first three tests he averaged about he averaged 421 with 177 not order headingly followed up by 152 at Lords and I think he made 90 or 92 yeah, no, and he was dismissed once in three innings yeah. with an average of 421 he ended the series at 109 if I remember correctly mm. so to say that he doesn't deserve a spot on an Ashes all-time list and then we fast forward to 97 I remember when the top order was crumbling, he was rallying with the tail time and again. And I think in 97, uh, I think he had a collision or he had a hamstring injury. He came back and he battered. Oh, that was no 01. 01. He yeah. came back and battered and, you know, at literally the saved the match yeah. for Australia. I think he won the match for Australia. Uh, yeah, they won at the end. They won the match for this. Yeah. So when you take these kinds of uh, performances mm. in probably the biggest series for an Australian or an Englishman, I fail to see how he cannot be in the top 25 mm, for my take. My bad, my bad. Well, that's our take on the batting. Now, we just thought we'd look at the bowlers a bit over here. And who do you think misses out? I, I, I know that, that he's got Anderson, but I'm sure you have a few names who you think should be in that list. Uh, I think Stuart Broad is unlucky to miss out just because if we're looking at impact in 2009 with the series at 1-0, right. he takes Pfeiffer in the final test and virtually wins the series by himself. And he's 8 for 15 when, uh, in the last series in 2015. I mean, that blows Australia away. With the series still in the balance, England ahead 2-1 in the fourth test. I think if you're looking for impact, um, it's hard to ignore Stuart Broad. And he, doesn't, he didn't get a start at all. <laughs> and someone who did get a start at 21, Graeme Swan. I mean, Graeme Swan was a, a fine bowler. An average of 40 in Ashes cricket compared to Alan Border, average of uh, something like 56. And to have Graham Swan at 21st and Allen Border at 24th, it just does not make sense. Right. And I think another one unlucky to miss out is Terry Alderman. The 89 series was all about him and Steve of 41 wickets in 89, 40 odd wickets in 81, and his concluding series, I think he took a bucket full of wickets there. So probably the only bowler to have had that feat. So I think he's unlucky to miss out mm -hmm. too. 
Okay, we, uh, yeah, thank you for joining us. Any comments you'd like to leave, please do so. And we'll see you next time on Cricket Insights. Bye for now.